Let's say we have our sales for the days in January and the same for February. And what we want is to get running totals by month where the total resets when the new month starts. Let me show you how to do this in Power Query. <music> to create our running total, we're going to use two functions, the list.firstn and list.sum. First, let's take a look at how list.firstn works. List.firstn allows us to retrieve a range of values at the start of a list. Let's open up a blank query and in the formula bar type equals list.firstn and the IntelliSense brings it up. Let's select it and as this is a function, type the open brackets or parentheses and the closed brackets are automatically inserted. Then type the curly brackets as lists are always in curly brackets in Power Query. If you would like to understand when to use the different types of brackets in Power Query, please check out this video here, Power Query Advanced Editor. The link is in the description also. In the curly brackets, let's type a list of numbers, so 10, 8, 6, 12. Remember to separate your numbers by a comma, then after the curly bracket, type a comma, and let's say we want the first two numbers of this list, so type 2. Press enter and we have a list with our first two numbers returned. So list.firstn has two arguments, the first being the list to search and the second being the number of items to return from that list. The second argument can also be a condition. Let's duplicate this query and let's delete the two and type each and insert a space and type an underscore and type more than or equals to 10 as we want only values equal to or greater than 10 to be returned. Press enter and the number 10 is returned. You will notice that 12 is not returned as this function returns all items that initially meet the condition. So once a value fails the condition, no other items are considered. So that's our list.firstn works. Then to see how list.sum is going to calculate our running total, let's go back to query1 and type list.sum before the list.firstn function and as this is a function, let's insert the open brackets at the beginning and close brackets at the end and press enter. And we have the sum of the two numbers that our list.firstn function returned, which was the 10 plus 8. So using these two functions is how we will get our running total. Let's replace the 2 with a 3 and our sum is 24. And if we replace the 3 with 4, our sum changes to 36. So you can see how these two functions are going to help us with the running total. Now let's put this into practice. To create our running total, we're going to use the source data here, which is already in a table format. It shows the order date for the months of January and February and the sales value made on each day. Let's send this to Power Query. Let's remove the change type step and change the order date column to date. Next, still with the order date column selected, here in the Add Column tab, go to Date and click the drop down and go down to Month and select Start of Month. You can select End of Month if you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Adding this step will help us with the next step, which is our grouping. Next, we need to group these rows by month. So everything for January needs to be in one group and the same for February. In the Transform tab, click on Group By. The column we want to group by is Start of Month. Let's keep the new column name as Count. We want all our rows to be grouped in our operation. When we use any of the rows for the operation, the column field is grayed out. Let's click OK. And we have a new column called Count with a subtable for each month. And if we click to the right of one of the tables, we can see the content at the bottom here, which is all the original columns. So because we grouped by the start of month, that column would also be in its own separate column. If we grouped by order date, for example, then this column next to Count would be order date instead of start of month. Let's change our grouping back to start of month. Next, let's right click on our table 1 query and click on reference. We will use the second query to create our function. So we're going to create a custom function first, then invoke that into our query. If you would like to learn more on custom functions, please check out this video here. 
Power Query Custom Functions. The link is in the description also. Let's rename this to MTD Totals for month to date totals. Then let's click on one of these tables to expand it as we need to do some transformations on one table and we will use that as our function. Next in the Add Column tab, click Custom Column and here in the Formula section is where we will add our two formulas. Let's start with List.FirstN and as it's a function, let's add the open brackets. Remember the first argument is the list that we want to search, so that would be the sales value column. So let's select that on the right here and insert a comma, and the second argument is the number of items that we want returned. But we don't know the exact number to be returned as each month there may be a varying amount of sales. So one month might have 4 sales and the next may have 20, so we need our count to be dynamic. We will achieve this by adding an index column and using that index column as the second argument in our list.firstN function. So let's cancel this custom column for now and click yes for exiting it. And here in add column, click on the drop down for the index column and select from 1. I will show you in a few minutes why we're using from 1 and not from 0. Still in the add column tab, click on custom column and let's type list.firstN. We can also select it from the IntelliSense, insert open brackets and select the sales value column as this is what will need to be searched and insert a comma and select the index column for the number of items to be returned. Insert close brackets and click on OK. And we get this expression error. We cannot convert the value to type list. That's because our list.firstN function requires the first argument to be a list, whereas our sales value is a column and not a list. So how do we convert our sales value column to a list? Let's click on the added index step here in applied steps. Then in our formula bar, click on the fx and click insert to insert a step. Power Query automatically references the last step. Still in the formula bar, let's type sales value in square brackets as columns are shown in square brackets and press enter. And we have converted our sales value column to a list. Next, let's select this code and copy it and delete the step that we used to generate the list as we don't need it anymore. Let's go back into our custom column step by clicking the gear icon on the right here and paste the code before the square bracket. Be sure to delete the second sales value that we initially had. So we have our sales value column and we've now converted that to a list that can be searched. And we have the count to be returned, which is in the index column. Let's click OK and we now have a column of lists. So our first list returns our sales value of 650, which is a count of 1. And the second list returns two values from our sales value list. So this is why we had to start our index from 1 and not 0. If we had started at 0, then our first list would not have returned anything. And our second list would have only returned one item instead of two, and so forth. So now we have our list. We need to sum these values up in each list. So let's go back into our added custom column step and type list.sum and insert our open and close bracket. And we now have our running month to date totals. Let's rename this column to month to date. Now we have our query that we can convert into a function and we're going to use the advanced editor for this. Click on view, advanced editor, and here are all the steps that our query used to generate our running total. Now let's turn this into a function. Let's add a space above let. This is where we will tell Power Query this is a function rather than a query. Insert open brackets and the close is automatically generated. Let's type sales data, then type the arrow operator which is used to define functions. So everything before the arrow operator is the input and everything after is what will be done to that input. These two lines of code after let is basically bringing in our source data and expanding our January table in the navigation step. So we don't need these lines as our source data will be our input here in sales data. So let's delete these two lines and replace this code to sales data. Then click on done and we now have our function to calculate our month to date totals. 
So now we're going to go back to our table one query and invoke this function into each of these tables. In the add column tab, click on invoke custom function. Let's leave the new column name as custom for now. In the function query, let's select our MTD totals function that we just created. And for the column, we want to apply our function to the count column as that's where our tables are and click on OK. So now we have a new column called MTD totals, which is the name of our function. So this means that our function has been applied in these tables. And if we click to the right of a table, we can see our calculations for the month to date totals. Let's expand this and keep order date and sales value. We don't want start of month and index, and we want to keep month to date. And let's remove use original column name as prefix and click OK. We now have our month to date columns with the running totals, which resets when it gets to the next month. Let's remove our start of month and count column as we don't need these anymore. Let's change the order date column to date and sales value and month to date columns to currency. Let's send this back to Excel. And of course, this is fully dynamic. So when we get the next month's data and hit refresh, our running totals are updated automatically and we can see that our total for the new month of March resets. If you would like to learn more advanced transformations in Power Query, please check out these two videos here, Advanced Pivot and Advanced Unpivot in Power Query. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.